Hey guys, this is Tom Box. Thanks for tuning in to MST.TV. And today we're gonna be talking about big misplays that's gonna cost you games. What's that? Misplays I hear? <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. Misplays? This sounds right up my alley. Yeah, cause, cause you make a ton of them. I'm, I, I feel like I'm gonna regret this. <laughs> Yes, we are bringing on Nishi into What's this video, <laughs> since you guys love having us together. Having the both of us here, it's great. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about that, but okay. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be talking about match costing misplays in the current format. I've been seeing a lot of it. How am I sniping wins? How are you, sni how are you sniping wins <laughs> at locals? I was a bit surprised, but anyways, that being said, yeah, these misplays are ranging from you know, just misunderstanding of rulings. Uh, there are other things, right, like bad habits that players have, or even just suboptimal gameplay, right? especially in a format that's as diverse and complex as we currently have. That just means you suck with the deck. I mean, I mean, I mean, you're inexperienced. Well, inex inexperienced. <laughs> you, you haven't played the deck long enough yet. Let's cut that other part out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, before we do get started, we are going to talk a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. I'm sure by now you guys have heard of Raid Shadow Legends, the RPG with over 600 epic looking champions. You guys already know I love pulling packs, and just as much I love summoning champions out of the portal, buffing them up at the tavern, just kickstarting them off to see how they fit in my party while taking out bosses. Speaking of bosses, we're putting the spotlight on one of the boss fights, Sylvania, the Guardian of the Spirit Keep. It turns out Sylvania was betrayed by the Elves of Arabia. Her family used to be really tight with the Queen, but the Elves had a bit of a cultural purge. So one time she came home and her whole family was gone. I don't know about you guys, I would be pretty upset too. And now you guys have to figure out how to defeat her in battle. You know what's one of the most challenging aspects of a boss? A boss that can heal themselves, but that's what Sylvania can do. And she also does damage based off of how much HP she has left. Hopefully you guys have a healing buff reduction because she's going to be healing up half every turn. You're also going to need some help getting rid of her. Block debuffs buff. And if you can, well that's it. You can get a head start and rack up some rewards. Alright guys, so there is a ton happening in Raid Shadow Legends this month. There are special events every day, a ton of awesome new champions coming to the game, and the brand new Guardian Ring feature as well that gives you a load of new ways to use your champions. Also keep in mind that at the start of December, Raid is releasing one of its biggest, most highly anticipated features ever. It looks absolutely insane. With all of these new updates and an even bigger one right around the corner, now is the perfect time to get started playing Raid. If you guys want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll get an epic hero, Chinoru, who is amazing in the Doom Tower, and 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard, so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in-game. So make sure you guys download the app as soon as you can. Now let's get back into some misplays. Misplay number one. Alright, draw phase. Draw for turn. Standby main. So how is that already a misplay? Standby main, that's like the most common phrase I use. It's a very, very common habit, especially when people are playing at a large event. Uh, they just go through standby main phase and they just say it, blurt it out kind of as a formality almost. And I've actually caught so many people doing this. It's <laughs> so funny. So how is it a misplay? So how is it a misplay? So Fluanderies is a deck and it's not really just Fluanderies. There's also decks like, uh, say, Shadals, especially Shism. Shism can only really use its effective fusion summon during the main phase. So if it's during the main phase, well, maybe you don't want to move into well, the main phase so quickly because standby main want to copy the cool kids. All the cool <laughs> kids are saying it. Yes. Yeah, it's a pretty bad habit. Against Wanderies, you probably want to slow down, especially in your sided game when you're holding stuff like Twin Twisters, Cosmic Cyclones, because Flanderies and the Dreaming Town gives them additional normal summon, and you know what one normal summon can do in Flanderies? It leads to like basically the tribute summon of either Apex Avian, or they're gonna drop a barrier statue on you. Mm -hmm. And now that Twin Twister is kind of useless because they can chain to you now, and it will actually be active. Right, so if you guys are playing that Twin Twister or Cosmic Cyclone like you've cited it in, uh, if it's your turn, maybe you wanna pause for a second during the standby phase and play the Twin Twisters. They can't chain Flawanderies and the Dreaming Town, yeah. and uh, you know, you're better off. Yeah, this is absolutely your own fault 
if you called Stand By Me. 100%. The moment you call Stand By Me, good, good luck calling a judge over. He's gonna say, he says Stand By Me. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what phase are you in? You're in the main phase. And uh, that's why you lost. <laughs> you cited incorrectly, but you bought but you your own phase. it very poorly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Misplay number two. Activate Conquistador. That's fine. I'm going to chain Sword Soul Blackout, targeting my face up Chaofeng, your Eldritch, and your set back row. All right. Okay. Uh, so after this chain resolves, I am going to activate Chaofeng's effect to search for a tuner from my deck. So, what was wrong with that scenario? Well, we're going back into the old school rulings of missing the timing, the actual missing the timing. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing this format, right, is uh, with a card like Sword Soul Blackout, there are certain cards, Twin Twister, Cosmic Cyclone, Destroy Phoenix Enforcer that people use to force out your opponent's set cards. And we mm -hmm. see Sword Soul Blackout activated as Chainlink 2. Well, in this particular case, the problem is with when you can activate the effect of Yazi or the effect of Chaofeng, right? So both of these cards have effects that activate when this card is destroyed, yeah. and they are optional effects. So they, so they say you can activate. So when you can triggers, not if, if basically will always happen, right. even if it is optional, mm -hmm. uh, but when it's a when, dot, 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 you know, destroyed by whatever, and then sent to the graveyard or not, but then it's you can as a part of the beginning of the resolution, if that's not happening as chain link one or as the last thing that's happening in this chain, uh, you can well miss the time. You're not allowed to activate. So that common scenario where you know chain link two, the uh, blackout destroyed to pop two cards. So you destroy the Yazi, then I resolve my part of the chain link, which is I summon out my conquistador in that previous example. Then conquistador gets summoned out, and uh, well, that's the end of that because. I guess the Yazi completely missed timing, the Chaofeng completely missed timing, mm -hmm. and that would be the end of that. So you actually do not get your search, you do not get your summon. And another kind of closer example, especially with a lot of people playing Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, is that they're going to bait your card back row, say you activate mm -hmm. like a Chalice because you don't want them to pop some of your other cards, and then they chain DPE to pop your, I guess your Yazi, and you're like, oh, I'll just let it go through since Yazi gets to summon. Well, Yazi being destroyed in Chainlink 2, will not be able to activate, so you actually gave him a, a bit of a free kill. <laughs> right. So, was, for example, if you guys have like multiple monsters on the field and you have that set blackout, maybe you want to, like even if they're forcing out your blackout, like you want to get rid of your monk or something else instead of the Chaofeng, you leave the Chaofeng up so that they have to destroy it another way so that you can actually get that trigger effect. Yeah, so guys, I guess the pro tip here is, sometimes you have to wait till right after a resolution of a certain card, that's when you would use the blackout so that you're able to force yourself in into that chain link one position to make sure that your uh, Yazi or your Chaofeng will be able to search tuna or summon out a worm type monster from the deck. Example number three. Uh, normal summon out Ecclesia, effect, summon out Moye, Moye reveal. I am going to effect Valor your Moye. All right, uh, I'm gonna activate instant fusion, summon out my fusion tuner, and uh, I'm going to synchro. Uh, add one, draw one, and set one past turn. All right, draw phase. So what's wrong with this scenario? Well, the thing is, Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous, I'm not talking about the Dogmatica one, of course. Obviously. Oh, it wouldn't make any <laughs> sense, otherwise how would you summon out the Moe? So, the, what was wrong with that scenario? There's a slight problem with that one, which is Ecclesia's effect to uh, get it back out of the graveyard, that's actually a mandatory effect. Right, so what we are seeing a little bit now is uh, people are activating instant fusion mm -hmm. in the ten use, or in the Sword Soul deck, and they are summoning Magic Key Beast and Cialobolus. There's that. There's actually also DPE. Yes. DPE in that per, uh, particular variant, and they have the Ecclesia in the graveyard. Right. And uh, some of them are just forgetting to add them back. Right. So obviously, uh, because Incredible Ecclesia is a mandatory effect, you do have to add it back. But the other thing that we do want to kind of address here is, let's say you've gone draw phase and standby phase of the following turn, yeah. and you've forgotten to add back the Ecclesia to your hand. Yeah. Well, what kind of happens? Well, what I've been seeing people are like, oh, it's too late. It's an accepted game state. Wow, someone's trying to shark you a little bit. What a cheat. But like the thing is, uh, you can definitely try to repair the game state. I feel like you can repair the game state. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Leave it down in the comment section because I'm like, well, it's a mandatory effect. If it's a mandatory effect and there's no unknown knowledge or anything like that that's kind of been forgotten, well, it's likely going to be repairable. Um, You just go back and 
add the card back to your head. <laughs> What's so hard about that? Right. Uh, and it's mandatory. Yeah, sure. There is going to be some procedural error warnings being dished out left and right. And it's a mandatory effect. Both players are trying to, should be trying to maintain the game state on this. I mean, it's pretty easy for both players to forget, especially, you know, you have an intense chain against your opponent and uh, they're like, oh, past turn. But try to remind your opponent as well to add it back. You guys want to ensure fair gameplay, right? But, you know, some people are in, on purpose trying to end the game as soon as possible before you get a chance. And mm -hmm. by, if, you know, if the game does end and someone has admitted defeat, you know, that at that point, I would say, yeah, right. you can't go back. But if it's like the following turn, I'd be, I'd be like, yeah, it's mandatory. Go ed get your card. It's like not letting add off of a Sangin. Yeah. I would complain about that. Right. For sure. But yeah, that I've been seeing that. That's a huge... Like error, uh, Inclusia is a very different card from something like Skarm, yeah. right? Where Skarm is the optional effect to add during the mat, uh, end phase. Yeah. So if you forget Skarm, well, that's kind of your own fault. Get uh, end phase Skarm tattooed on your arm or something like that. <laughs> um, if you're still playing Burning Abyss in 2021, but uh, Ecclesia is obviously a very different card, right? Yeah. So, so just remember that this card is mandatory, and if it's in a very like simple game state where you can mm -hmm. easily just reverse back to it, get back your card. Just be careful about this one because uh, you definitely want this card back in your hand for sure. It's a, it's a pretty good card. It's a really <laughs> good follow up and don't mess up. So some people are trying to cheat saying, oh, it's too late. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not really too late when a lot of things are mandatory. Mm -hmm. Misplay number four. Activate Magical Meltdown. I'm gonna chain Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. All right. Okay, that's sweet. I'm gonna activate Fusion Destiny, summoning out my Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer. And on the resolution, I'm going to activate its effect. And I'm gonna pop that summon limit that's on the board. Uh, I'm going to chain Forbidden Chalice, targeting your Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Oh, oh okay. First of all, what's wrong with this example here? Well, you guys haven't hit the subscribe button just yet, so make sure you guys go ahead, you know, hit that button right about here somewhere. Somewhere down there. <laughs> yeah, hit subscribe. You guys are enjoying this, and uh, yeah, just give us a like, because we're trying to help you guys win some more, and uh, stop losing to like these really <laughs> stupid mistakes. And guys, this is a ruling related to Magical Meltdown, which is 2017. Oh you guys were discussing this, this in 2021, so apparently some things still aren't clear about Magical Meltdown. Uh, so in this case, What's wrong with Forbiddening Chalice? Forbi yeah, that's right. Forbiddening Chalice. Forbiddening Chalice. Fine, we'll go with that. So what's wrong with using Forbidden Chalice on that particular play? Yes. Well, oh my god. I hate explaining this at locals because people get... Like, they're still confused after the explanation, so mm -hmm. you guys probably will still be a little bit confused. Well, the thing is, Magical Meltdown's other effect, which is upon the summoning a fusion summoning of a monster no card but your opponent basically cannot activate any cards in response to that particular timing window and to be a bit more specific the previous example which kind of annoyed a lot of people was with cross sheep right. with construct because construct activate cross sheep activated and now you have a problem it's like you can't actually negate that cross sheep's activation because you're still in a fusion summoned timing and uh, therefore magical meltdown prevents you from activating anything like the opponent cannot activate anything in response which also goes back to our current example which the last thing that happened in that particular chain and you actually have to be very specific about this one which is you activated the fusion destiny you performed the fusion summon of destiny hero phoenix enforcer and they say on the resolution of the fusion summon, which means they are still in that window. They can activate Destiny Hero uh, Phoenix Enforcer, Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, and they'll be able to pop a card. Yeah. And it doesn't target, which is really big, but you not being able to activate anything in response to just Chalice, you can't Chalice, you can't Imperm. You can't, you can't do anything right. really to that card. You can't, I don't, I don't think you can even strike it at this point. Yeah. So... Uh, that gives you a free pop and mm -hmm. some people are just letting it go they're just completely forgetting that magical meltdown is there but if there's some ambiguity of you know upon not saying you know at, at the resolution of the uh, fusion, uh fusion destiny uh that's when the argument can stem like oh you didn't say what timing it was well what timing do you think it was gonna be right. that's that kind of argument can stem from that we've seen it oh my god i've seen like <laughs> i've seen that argument at locals Twice already. Oh really? Yeah, twice already. <laughs> yeah, because of the, all the invoke players we have. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So, so I guess 
a, a kind of way of like explaining this ruling is that it's like because destroy phoenix enforcer is a quick effect you're activating its effect almost in response to the summon correct right and what you guys want to do um if you are playing destroy phoenix enforcer in your own deck one thing you guys can do is take advantage of this to uh if you have magical meltdown on the field yeah uh to take advantage of the fact that your opponent can't respond with an effect veiler or a forbidden chalice and use this to get rid of an opponent's problem card it's kind of almost super poly level yeah yeah basically right not, not allowing your opponent to respond is uh pretty is super polymerization level right so yeah, that's pretty annoying so Get ready for that. <laughs> if, if, I think I think explaining that to someone mm -hmm. was m harder than actually doing the play. I yeah. mean, <laughs> going back to the previous example with construct cross sheep, you people would say, "Well, I'm not responding to the fusion summon. I'm responding to the effect of cross sheep." Yeah. So why can't I? But what you have to understand is, if construct is chain link one on summon, and then cross sheep is chain link two, that's still in response to the summon. So yeah, you still can't. Still, respond. it's in response to the right. fusion summon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you guys want to read Magical Meltdown yourself, you guys can do so by going on to Google and typing <laughs> that card out because I don't even want to explain it anymore. I'm yeah, done. Guys, it's <laughs> 2021. Why are we discussing Magical Meltdown? Yeah, oh my god. Misplay number five. Phoenix Enforcer. Such a great card. I love yes. how it, it has a lot of wording in there that it kind of throws a lot of people off. And this is a common, I guess, ruling misinterpretation. Right. This is a ruling inter misinterpretation in terms of both. There's a lot, the wording both, some people take part of the interpretation of, oh, you have to resolve the entire card to do the certain thing. Like you have to pop two cards and uh, therefore they're like, oh, if it doesn't resolve the whole thing, you can't do it. And in some cases, you know, that's true, but you have to understand the difference between something that is unpoppable versus nothing to pop right. okay there's a clear difference here because some things that i've seen i don't like getting called over for this because explaining it is like they try to take their bits and pieces of like oh it says both you right. have to pop both or you don't get to pop anything well it's kind of true, but like, let's, let's put it into an example here. Let's go with Ghost Ogre versus Phoenix Enforcer. Your opponent activates Phoenix Enforcer, you chain Ghost Ogre to it. And that if Phoenix Enforcer was the only monster on your own side of the field when that occurred, and you have nothing, no other cards to pop, and you tried to pop one of their cards, you can't because you don't get to pop two cards. All right. right. So Enforcer basically has to attempt to pop two cards on resolution, destroy a card, attempt to destroy a card yeah. on each player's side of the field. So if the destroy Not Phoenix, each player, just like two cards. Because you can, pop, you can pop your own card too. Right. So if you have no cards on the field, yeah. you can't. Yeah, because you because one card has to be on your own side, the other card can be anywhere. But if you don't have any cards, you can't... You can't really, fulfill the half of that. Correct. You can't fulfill that part, and that part is going to sting you. And the other part is that, okay, what if they have a monster that cannot be destroyed? And it was, this was so weird. I don't know why I have to talk about this, but they're like, oh, uh, like you have a monster that is unaffected. Say, let's go with the, the Arrival Cybers. That card is just mm -hmm. unaffected by basically all card effects. And they're like, oh, DP effect and uh, attempt to, to pop something. And they're like, okay, it resolved. Oh, I'm going to try to pop your... Uh, the only card available, which is the Arrival Cybers, and like, oh, I guess since I can't pop it, my card doesn't get destroyed. Right. But that's not true, because you have to attempt the destruction anyway on the resolution, and guess what? They happen at the same time. You do have two things to pop. It does pop your own card. Sure, the other card lives, but your card dies, which is still good. You get to proc it, come back. That's right. great. But I've seen, I've seen people like, oh, the the other guy saying, oh, it doesn't pop because you didn't pop both. I'm like, that's not how it works. <laughs> Destruction, if it's just destroy both, as long as during the resolution it attempts to destroy both, you're still good. But the only time that it doesn't actually resolve is when you don't have the thing to actually pop. The thing is missing rather than the thing being unpoppable. Right. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope it does. Does that make sense to you? I, I think it makes sense. Uh, I mean, sure? the, the, other, <laughs> the other example that comes to mind is uh, Chen Ying. Chen Ying. Right, for the uh, Sorcerer yeah. deck. Oh right? my god. Because you can banish a card 
from your graveyard or a sword, sword soul or a worm from your graveyard. Well, any card. Of it's any card. Any, it's card any card. From your it's graveyard. any card. Instead of having that card be destroyed, right? Yeah. So even though the Chang'ing doesn't get popped, you, you just banish a card on resolution. Yeah. But the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer still pops the card on your side of the field, for example. Yeah. And, ah, and, 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 and first of all, you shouldn't even be doing that. That is a huge miss. That's an actual misplay. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, uh, that's a big misplay. Because <laughs> let's just say your Phoenix Enforcer is about to get banished <laughs> to like five Shadow Realms deep. <laughs> and right. you're losing another card with it. Yeah, it's uh, and goodbye Celestial too. <laughs> it's, it's over. Oh, you have Dasher. <laughs> Yeah, great. Uh, that's doing a lot for you. <laughs> so that's kind of the explanation I want to give to you guys. These are very significant misplays because uh, mm -hmm. if you don't know the rules on these ones or you're doing it wrong, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a match breaker for you. Right. These are some games that you do not deserve to lose, but you didn't know. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah. that's all I got for this video, guys. That's all. How much we got? I think there. that's all the rulings we have. I'm not usually in these ruling videos. This is not even a ruling <laughs> video. This is just don't misplay and don't suck. Yeah. All right. Get better at the game, guys. Get good. By following the, our channel. Yeah, subscribe. Make subscribe. sure you subscribe. Yeah, ding notification That's bell. all it takes to be good at Yu-Gi-Oh. You yeah. just have to be subscribed to MSTTV. Yeah. That's the only requirement. All right. <laughs> and, uh, well, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.